Director Robert Eggers was pitching the film The Witch when he and his brother came up with the idea for The Lighthouse. They were talking about adapting Edgar Allan Poe's unfinished short story The Lighthouse. The two started researching into the lifestyle of wikis, working in lighthouses in the 1890s. Eggers had to put his idea aside to direct The Witch, then started production on The Lighthouse closely after its release. The Lighthouse, much like The Witch, has an adoration for folklore, this time being sailor folklore rather than New England folklore. The film follows two wikis stranded on a small island as they both start to lose their minds. The film stars Robert Pattison and Willem Dafoe. Hey guys, and welcome to Garage Movie Reviews, where we just explore a random movie that's on my mind. Today we're going to talk about The Lighthouse. And I don't really usually do very recent films, like I'll talk about recent films here and there, but I've never done really one this recent, if you put the top 10 of 2021 aside. Uh, I just really fucking love this movie and I wanted to rewatch it. I'm not exaggerating when I say this is probably the best movie to come out in the past five, maybe more years. I really like this movie. This is a true work of art. There's so much to unpack in this film. This is such a masterfully made film and I feel like it doesn't get enough attention. At least not mainstream attention. It's a very popular movie amongst film fans, but I wish it kind of made some more mainstream headlines. It's a lot of wishful thinking because at the end of the day, it's a black and white movie shot in like this aspect ratio like a fucking box and it's about freaking wikis and lighthouses and it's not something that your average film consumer can hook on to. But nonetheless, I wish this movie got a bit more attention in the mainstream, but we're going to talk about that towards the end of this review. What I think really works about The Lighthouse is that it takes a bunch of different stories and themes, kind of meshes them all together. On the one hand, this is a very folklore movie. It has a very sailor folklore theme. The one thing that makes it feel like sailor folklore especially is when Willem Dafoe's character is talking to Robert Pattinson's character on why it's bad to kill a seabird. More tall tales. Bad luck to kill a seabird! And he says it's because it's the spirit of sailors that have passed away, they come back as seagulls. And every time Robert Pattinson is getting himself into trouble, a seabird will show up, almost like as if the seabird is giving him one dire warning. And of course, in this movie, shit starts hitting the fan as soon as Robert Pattinson kills one of these seabirds. Now it does feel very folky, and it does also feel a little Lovecraftian. The tentacles in this movie, there's like giant tentacle monsters at some point in this movie, kind of had a slight feeling of cosmic horror. Like I said, there was some Edgar Allan Poe influence in this film as well. There is some Greek mythology influence in this as well. The whole story of Prometheus opening Pandora's box. Of course, in this situation, Pandora's box is now the lighthouse itself, the giant light in the lighthouse. And at the end of the film, Robert Pattinson dies in a fashion that's very similar to Prometheus, with a bird gnawing at his liver.
So you have all of these different mythologies, folklore, Greek mythology, you have Lovecraftian feels, you have Edgar Allan Poe feels, and it kind of all comes together nicely, and it doesn't really feel showy. It doesn't really feel braggy. Sometimes when it comes to auteur directors, they'll be flexing at the camera and be like, look how much I know about Greek mythology. Look how much I know about Edgar Allan Poe. And in this movie, it's just subtle enough. And it all fits together. Nothing really feels out of place in this movie. Despite this movie feeling very bizarre and weird, which is intentional. As a matter of fact, when Robert Eggers and his brother wrote the first draft of this screenplay, they thought it was a little too obvious. They thought it was a little too on the nose. And they felt like if these characters are going mad and getting confused, the audience should be going mad and being confused as well. So there's a lot in this film that's up to interpretation. Obviously, I picked up on the themes and ideas that I understood in this film, and other people are going to draw different conclusions as well. One might argue that this film kind of has a theme of alcoholism going on in the background as well, and that is the reason why the bird at the end is gnawing at Robert Pattinson's liver. So it's all up to the audience, and I like movies that do that. I like movies that tell the audience, look, here are some things you can grasp onto, and here are some other things that are a bit more experimental that you can interpret for yourself. Sometimes movies, they'll get a little too lost in the craziness and they'll forget what the story is. This isn't the case here. There's a very easy to grasp story. Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe, stranded on an island with a lighthouse as they're keeping the lighthouse they start going mad, and the rest is up to your interpretation. And let's talk about Robert Pattinson's relationship with Willem Dafoe in this movie. Uh, two lighthouse keepers, Willem Dafoe is more of an old sailor type, a big tough guy, and Robert Pattinson is the newbie who's uh, on his first job. And there's kind of this weird alpha versus beta male energy going on, when the movie opens and we're introduced to Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson, the first thing Willem Dafoe's character does is lace a giant juicy fart. Almost as if Willem Dafoe's character is marking his territory. That kind of alpha versus beta energy kind of continues when Robert Pattinson starts getting jealous of the fact that Willem Dafoe's character is spending too much time in the lighthouse and Robert Pattinson is jerking off to a little statue of a mermaid. Meanwhile, Willem Dafoe's having the climax of a lifetime going into this lighthouse. And that alpha and beta energy kind of switches at a certain point in the film. It starts with Robert Pattinson kind of criticizing Willem Dafoe, criticizing the way he cooks. And Willem Dafoe's character takes a lot of offense to it. You're drunk! You don't know what you're talking! How can I possibly like the horse shit you fix us for supper? You're drunk! I, you won't be saying that! King Kitchen Shanty cooks. Oh, it was drunk. fried donuts three you're times drunk. a day. You're Country drunk! Country hand bigger you're than your drunk. I'm drunk! Until the tail end of this film, where frickin' Robert Pattinson is walking Willem Dafoe like it's his fucking dog. So you really get to see that switch in power. From Willem Dafoe's character being the powerful one, the one in command, the one barking orders at Robert Pattinson, to Robert Pattinson barking orders at Willem Dafoe. Literally barking. Pun intended, they bark in this movie. <laughs> now their relationship, you can kind of say it's out of jealousy. Maybe Robert Pattinson is a little jealous for Willem Dafoe. Uh, maybe Robert Pattinson views Willem Dafoe's character as a father figure. And there are some homosexual tendencies going on in this film. There are some points where Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe are very close together and almost kissing at a certain point. So you can't really put your finger on what's their relationship like. It's a very intimate relationship. When Robert Pattinson opens up about his true self to Willem Dafoe, it's almost like it gets too intimate 
So it's almost like it's uniquely sexual. It almost has a sort of Oedipus kind of feel to it. Or almost like a Stockholm Syndrome thing where Robert Pattinson falls in love with his kidnapper, kind of. He's kind of held captive by Willem Dafoe. And I feel that's what's really interesting about this movie. It's a very simple story with very easy to grasp tropes. Tropes that we've seen in Greek mythology and in famous literature. Stuff that really connects with an audience. But meanwhile, it's a very deep character study. And what makes the performances in this truly amazing, in my opinion, is Robert Eggers' direction. Robert Eggers researched the language that was spoken, how they speak for this film, and the way this screenplay is written, it's almost like it's written in a different language. I don't understand. I, I saw Robert Eggers in an interview, and he's, like, from Massachusetts. He just sounds like a normal dude from Massachusetts. But these characters, they sound like real sailors from the 1890s. And it's like, how the fuck did he pull that off? Without it feeling showy, sometimes these Hollywood movies, they'll have like a few lines of dialogue that are spursed in the script that kind of feel like sailor slang. No, this is consistent throughout the film. It really feels like a period piece. It feels like you teleport to that time period. And I was listening to interviews with Robert Eggers in preparation for this video, and he said something that I truly respect. He said that little details people are not going to notice. If a button on Willem Dafoe's shirt isn't truly accurate of that time period versus if it is, it's not going to add or detract from the film experience. All it's going to do is a, make it easier for the actors to act because they feel like they're in that time period. And B, all of those little details, they kind of accumulate after a while. Which I can kind of respect where he's coming from in that regard. This film was shot on location, which is not something that's usually done nowadays. This film was shot in Nova Scotia, Canada. Apparently, on a peninsula called Cape Foreshoe. And this place, I've never been. I'm Canadian, but I've never been to Nova Scotia. I, I apologize. But apparently this place, is, it has some harsh weather conditions in the winter. And they shot in a time period where the weather conditions were shit. These characters had to act their asses off in the middle of fucking storms, heavy winds, probably snow at a few points. And I feel like that kind of adds to their performance. Because at a certain point in this film's production... Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson really didn't get along. And it kind of reminded me of Mad Max Fury Road, how Tom Hardy didn't get along with Charlize Theron. But in that movie, it's because, yeah, they're filming in the desert, they're in a fucking stuffy car, and they're wearing leather. Of course you're going to pick a fight with your co-stars. And the same can be said for The Lighthouse. And it works in The Lighthouse because these two characters aren't supposed to like each other. So the fact that they didn't get along on set kind of helps it. At the same time, I'm like, who the fuck doesn't get along with Willem Dafoe? The guy seems like the most chill dude ever. The extreme weather conditions didn't only cause problems in front of the camera, it caused problems behind the camera as well. This film, in order to obtain a truly unique feel, it was shot with very ancient technology, very ancient lenses, very ancient cameras, which is a pretty cool thing, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to film in the middle of these harsh weather conditions. Meanwhile, you're fucking up all your equipment. Apparently, there are scenes where the fog was so heavy, they had to cut every few seconds because there was fog accumulating on these lenses. You know, filmmaking isn't supposed to be easy. Of course, this film could have all been shot in front of a green screen in a studio in Miami. But it wouldn't be the lighthouse. This movie really feels authentic. It's such an authentic movie. In a time where everything and everyone feels so fake, this is a truly genuine movie. Which I feel like that's the reason why I love this movie so much. is because it feels like I'm teleported to a different time period. So like I said, to obtain the film's unique cinematography, they shot using antique equipment. They also shoot the film in black and white and using a square aspect ratio. So the movie the whole time looks like a perfect box. And the cinematography in this film is on point. 
the two shots that really strike me in this movie. The first shot is the shot of Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe looking into the camera as if they're taking an old-timey picture and they're just waiting like that as they're about to start their duties on the lighthouse. That shot right there, that shot right there brought me to that time period. And the other shot that really interested me in this movie is the shot of Willem Dafoe naked beaming light from his eyeballs into Robert Pattinson's face. And apparently that shot was inspired by a famous painting by Sasha Schneider. This movie, beautiful cinematography, beautiful acting, some of the best acting I've seen, period. A great story that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Some batshit crazy moments, some truly horrific moments. Uh, Willem Dafoe as a creepy merman, that was kind of gross and creepy. And the mystery surrounding this film. What is the lighthouse? Why is Robert Pattinson so obsessed with going into this lighthouse? And when he does go into the lighthouse, what the fuck happens to him? Why did his face melt and not Willem Dafoe's face? It's so much mystery surrounding this movie, which is why it feels like a folk movie. Not every question has an answer in this movie. It kind of leaves a lot to speculation, which most folk tales do leave a lot to interpretation as well. Everything is done to a T in this movie. The acting, the cinematography. Why wasn't this nominated for all the Oscars? It did get an Oscar nomination for cinematography, but none for acting, which baffles me. I think Willem Dafoe, especially in this movie, is fantastic. And when you consider it, Willem Dafoe's been nominated for a lot of Oscars, especially when it comes to indie movies that no one's really heard of. He was nominated for The Florida Project, he was nominated for At Eternity's Gate, where he plays the painter Van Gogh. So why wasn't this movie nominated for anything? And I feel like maybe it's because the movie is a little too weird. As far as cinematography, I think it was just nominated because it's black and white. And I feel like every year, uh, the Oscars like nominating a black and white movie for cinematography. Yeah, so I think it was just the Oscars kind of like patting themselves on the back. Like, oh, look at us. We nominated The Lighthouse for cinematography. Which is like, no, duh. Any person with eyes will notice this movie has amazing cinematography. I just don't know how you don't nominate Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe for this movie. These are like crazy good performances. Willem Dafoe apparently uh, spent... Apparently Robert Pattinson was sleeping in a motel, but Willem Dafoe was sleeping in like a fisherman's cabin and he'd always go up to Robert Eggers like, let's do lines and he wouldn't break his accent. And there's so many parts in this where Willem Dafoe is quotable. Every fart, maybe that was the problem. Maybe it's because he farted too many times to be Oscar nominated. Maybe the Oscars thought if we let one nominee fart, then that opens the floodgates. Then you'll have Adam Sandler nominated for a ton of Oscars, which uh, ironically, I also think Adam Sandler should have been nominated that year for Uncut Gems. Two big snubs that year. Anyway, this movie is amazing. Uh, I think Robert Eggers is the most interesting filmmaker working right now, and I don't think I'm turning too many heads. From what I saw, there's the trailer of The Norseman that just came out, and everyone's going batshit crazy for it, which uh, I'm going batshit crazy for it again. True, there's very few unique voices in Hollywood right now. And I'm talking about voices of our generation. Like, sure, David Fincher is still at the height of his game. He's still doing well. Scorsese is still doing well, still making great movies. But who is our generation's Scorsese? Who is our generation's David Fincher? Who's our generation's Tarantino? Who's our generation's Spike Lee? I don't know. Maybe it's because films aren't as popular nowadays. But I feel like Robert Eggers definitely in the conversation. I think he's truly a crazy good filmmaker. Between this and The Witch, 
I think I did a top 10 of the year The Witch came out, and The Witch was number three. And in the top 10 of 2019, The Lighthouse was number one or number two. Usually goes back and forth between that and The Irishman. But holy shit, this is a good movie. Guys, if you haven't seen The Lighthouse, go watch it immediately. What are you waiting for? Go watch The Lighthouse. I love this movie, and so will you. And guys, tune in. I got myself a little surprise here I got from the A24 shop, so stay tuned on my channel and uh, we'll talk about it.